entrepreneur and sustainability leader A.Y. Young and his business partner engineering genius Thor to discuss his company Battery Tour, how he became a sustainable music icon and his hopes for the future of sustainable energy. My name is Kaya Sakamoto and you're listening to Climate Vibes, a podcast created by the Climate Music Project. So how did you get started in music and in sustainability? Awesome. Yeah. I was on the the X Factor TV show in 2012. And so that's kind of was like my music start and how I like, you know, got to know the music business. And, you know, I got four yeses from the celebrity judges. It was like a really awesome experience, you know, like being on the X Factor TV show, getting to meet people in the business, learning what the business was. And that's, I mean, that's kind of how I got my start. So that was music. And then how did you get started in sustainability? Well, I mean, once I got a TV show, I wanted to say hey to the world. And like in, in the music business, it's just full of gatekeepers, right? I mean, in any business, it doesn't matter what you're trying to do. There, there are people that hold keys to platforms. And so, you know, I would try to open up for it. Wiz Khalifa or whoever, and, you know, the industry or booking agents would be like, well, well uh, how many followers do you have? How many tickets has your last tour sold out? I'm like, I haven't even scored yet, bro. That's why I'm talking to you. That's why I was like, all right, screw it. I'm, I'm going to be like Bruno Mars. You know, I'm going to do a concert every day. And so I was like, well, how can I power a concert every single day? So that's what I, I obsessed over trying to figure out and figure out, as Thor will say, my partner, you know, energy is the base resource and learning how to, okay, we can store renewable energy you know, in batteries and I can power these concerts. So that's when I like took it to the streets and started performing any place, you know, anywhere, anytime. I mean, I started bringing people together, all ages, all demographics. And, you know, it's funny because, uh, you know, I'm performing, I'm looking back and I see batteries. I'm like, hey, this is the battery tour. So that's how the name was born. I see. And then people do, people would donate and they would be like, hey man, we're well, your outlets. We power the tour. <laughs> Once I recognize, like, okay, everyone's an outlet. Everyone in the world is an outlet for change, right? And the battery tour is already in every home in America. It's already in every gym in America. It's like, okay, how can I use music as a vehicle to get the world plugged in? You know, as I started traveling, I opened for Wiz Khalifa. I opened for Shaggy. did all these things, and I, I learned around America and the world, there's over a billion people that lack access to energy. So I'm like, okay you know, let's build some technology, let's raise awareness about this, and let's use these, this battery to a platform to get the world plugged in. So that was my first brushing with sustainability, but really to mesh the two together, I mean, there's only really one way to describe how that happened, and that's just meeting Thor. And he is sustainability, so he can really, like, tell you how, uh, how we were able to bridge the two even better, but yeah intro Thor right now. (laughs) Awesome. So Thor, how did you find your way to AY and partner up? For sure. So yeah, I mean, uh, a long journey, no doubt. But um, starting at my roots, you know, I I went through some hardship when I was small and I was brought up in uh, religion. And so, you know, my story really starts there where I didn't want to, you know, follow blindly, right? And I just kept questioning things around me. And I kind of thought about, you know, of religions in different parts of the world and from different times come up with the same concepts and beliefs, then those common beliefs I could take for my own and I could, you know, establish my core belief system. And so I ended up at the golden rule, right? Which is treat others as you want to be treated. And so I took that concept of kind of figuring out, you know, what the commonalities were, you know, across different areas and applied that to science and growth in organisms, essentially. And I ended up, you know, going to college and in my college education, I realized that I'm, I really am what I consume, you know, like water, air, food, and last but not least data, right? Information. And so I thought to myself, you know, if I could find something, some way that I could improve some quality of life component, like, you know, whether that's purifying the air, purifying the water, purifying the food, you know, if I could do that for myself, I would not only 
enjoy a higher life quality, but I would be able to replicate that and then help other people, you know, enjoy a higher life quality. And so I was focused on, you know, developing like an ecosystem kind of foundational business idea. And I was growing organics on wastewater and creating high value bioproducts like nutraceuticals and biofuels and such uh, in my research. And so, you know, I had those big, big ideas and big aspirations. And I realized, again, I, I didn't know how to make them come to life. You know, I, I didn't have a way or a process to do that. But I knew that these things could work and I knew that they they will enhance life quality. So I took a job in manufacturing with Ford, I'm an engineering project manager in manufacturing. And, you know, I got this nice project management skills and I, I still wanted more. You know, I, I needed to satisfy my sustainability drive right inside that I, I dedicated myself to. And so I reached out, you know, to a lot of different people in the company and I even sent an email to the CEO, you know, trying to trying to figure out what to do, you know, is there a way to make these dreams come to life within Ford, you know, they care about sustainability and stuff. And essentially they got me into a group of people that were that were working on some innovation and what we ended up creating was an innovation incubator, to kind of service those those ideas. Got brought on to my next project, which was down here in Kansas City and down here is where I'm at AY. And I wasn't here long when I went to the entrepreneurial resources, you know, looking for inspiration, more engagement, you know, on, on the sustainability piece and the business model piece. And, and I heard AY talking in one of these meetings that we were all in and he just said music and sustainability to me. And I said, wow, like, this is it. This is really it. And it, it set me back in my seat a minute because it, it pushed me to reminisce about my, you know, my upbringing and my childhood and some of the you know, hardships that I faced and music has that power to take you deep into an emotion or feeling, you know, and it, it just drives with you and and you can experience this thing through the music. And, you know, in other ways too, it can completely transport you right into a completely new direction and save your life even. So when I met him, it just made a whole lot of sense. It just, it just clicked, you know, sustainability is our only future. Combining those two such powerful things, you know, literally the only way we will survive and the way we've been surviving because of music, you know, being that really nice piece that that cultivates us in our soul. And um, what are your long term goals for Battery Tour? Ooh, they are many. Hey, wow, you got any thoughts? I mean, <laughs> I think that, that that's like a, a question for like two different ways, right? Okay. So, like, what are the long term th- thoughts with Battery Tour? And Battery Tour has a lot of different arms and legs, right? We have technology, right, which is its own thing mm-hmm. that can do a lot of stuff. We can scale out the technology. And I, I believe that we should be powering Al Gore's next speech at the climate reality. There's no reason why Greta Thunberg should be talking and not powered by battery to a right renewable energy. That's just the technology. Then you want to talk about like the nonprofit piece that we have built. And that's essentially just getting the world access to energy. There's over a billion people. I've only got 17 countries plugged in and only a small village or and or people in, in those places. So we got a lot of work to do there. And that's got to be built out. When you, when you talk about the for-profit model that we've been working on, there's a lot of work to be done there. So the big picture, I guess, to, to really just not sound repetitive with Battery Tour, I would say to, to get the world plugged in. I think with me, AY, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an entertainer. I always wanted my music to be a symbol. Putting this stuff together, I always talked about Prince and how he was a symbol, right? And when you look at Michael Jackson and some of these guys that were great artists and entertainers, their music passed down through generation for me like really long term i'm chasing the james browns the ryan tedders you know the pensados in the music business i'm chasing uh the michael jacksons and the princes as far as like what i want my music to mean and stand for which obviously the world is identifying my music with sustainability and so maybe i might be the first sustainability icon with a pop crossover like applicability I mean, I, I already opened for Wiz Khalifa, who's exactly different than Shaggy, who's exactly different than Aaron Carter. I've developed the skills to do country music in a country town because I did 200 and something shows around America and they were battery tour powered micro concerts setting up wherever there are people. And so sometimes I'm in an urban area, sometimes I'm in a upper class suburban area, sometimes I'm in a country, you know, and I had to make and do music that would connect to the people that were around me. So it's created an ability for me to make music that I think can connect to everyone. And I want my music to then connect to everyone. Hopefully that gives you an idea and then Thor can, can chime in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, so I mean, uh, long-term, you know, just again, get the world plugged in, right? And the idea 
you know, that idea means, you know, it, it means so much like that statement and you can imagine where you could take it, you know, at the, at the very, let's say obvious level, it literally means get people access to electricity. It's about energy and actually getting people access. And then, you know, once you think about getting access to energy and especially clean energy, now you have a foundation for a truly sustainable society. You know, I could, I could be purifying water, but if I'm using energy, you know, from something that's emitting pollution, then of course it's not as clean. So if you start with energy as the base resource and you break it out further, you know, then you get the clean, the clean resources that we're looking for, you know, you get clean food, right? You get all these different pieces afterwards, and then you get all the way to like education or internet, right? You say, well, let's get, let's get the world internet, you know, and I know 5G is coming out and, you know, things are happening, but what's interesting that we've seen too globally is the, the idea that people are in need of very basic resources, but everyone's got a cell phone, you know, and it's really interesting. And if you get people that access to internet, well, now you open up all kinds of possibilities for education and education is truly the grounding piece that everyone, you know, needs and, and desires, I think really, right. I think that everyone really longs for this understanding of life and takes resources and a network and everything to make that happen. Right. And you can't even think about those things if you don't have your base resources, you know, and Kaya, like, Mm -hmm. One thing that we want the value to it to be to add on to even what Thor is saying is like also the platform for a lot of those things. So whether obviously from the basic level, artists are having a platform. I'm a musician. I can perform. I can sing. I can dance. But powered by sustainability. Look at you. You, you. You're doing a podcast. You have dreams and goals. And the battery tour is that vehicle for you to plug into that we hope to empower you. Which is why what you want to do matters. And that's why we even asked you the first time we met. It's like, yo, what do you want to be? And how can we plug you in so you can do what you love to do? That's what the value tour is really trying to do too. To help others. Yes. And to add on to that point, you know, the the culture that we're building is just purely out of love, right? It's in our DNA. It's in everyone's DNA, right? It's in our social creature naturalness, right? It's it's who we all are. And and we, you know, AY and myself are really focused on that. It's this collaborative nature where, you know, people can do what they want to do, right? People can work at something that they want to work at, even if that changes over time, right? And, you know, furthermore, of course, you know, it's the, it's a sustainability piece, right? Which I could talk for days and I, I would love to, but it's, you know, it's not just the, the carbon pollution emissions, right? It's not just the pesticides that we're putting on our food, right? It's, it's so much more. I mean, it's, it's, everything that we're doing in society today has an impact and to recognize that just that statement right to recognize that every single action has an equal and opposite reaction it's the truth and we have to be cognizant of our actions and so we'll just do like a fun little rapid fire type thing so i'll say a word and then you guys will just say the first thing that comes to mind here we go (laughs) all right so planet Save. Yeah, save. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I got a song called Save the Planet. Why? All right, climate. Action. Crisis. Woo. Oh, what did he say? He said crisis. Oh, that's an action. Okay, cool. It's good. We, we got both sides of the spectrum covered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Activism. Love. Youth. Okay, energy. Outlet. Storage. What'd you say, A-Y? Outlet. Outlet. Hey. <laughs> Huh? I said storage. <laughs> um, life. Love. You know, nothing has came to mind yet. When you say life, I think, I think, uh, I'd say blessed. And finally, justice. Subtle is the word that comes to my mind. Subtle? Yeah, because there's aggressive ways to achieve advancement. And I, I feel like I've mastered or mastering, or always have set out to master a more subtle way. It's like in the Bible, they talk about like bringing people to Christ, right? You got these guys that will walk and knock on every door. Hey, do you know the scripture, right? And then you might have someone who doesn't cuss or doesn't drink or is always respectful. And you go, man, why are you different? And then they go, oh, well, let me tell you why. And so I'm not saying those other ways are not how you can get justice, right? Like, let's go mark, let's go do this, let's go do that. I think all those things are necessary. When I think of maybe the way I like the best is more subtle. Yeah, mine would be humble. To justice, it would be humble. 
So AOI, you have been selected by the UN as one of the 17 young leaders for sustainability. Yeah. What exactly does that mean? So the the UN uh, selects every two years, actually, they're selecting, you know, 17 different people that, you know, uh, will be young leaders uh, for the world and for all the SDGs, which are called the Sustainable Development Goals, which are a range of different things. And really, Thor has mentioned a lot of different ones from education to energy to all these different things. And so, yeah, I'm one of the 17. I mean, what it means, first off, is obviously on the 18th, uh, the UN General Assembly, the announcement of the 17 uh, young world leaders will be there in front of all the different world leaders, right? Uh, now we're working hand in hand with the youth envoy, the secretary general as well. And and from just honestly, from the, the conversations I've had now with some of the 17 and with the UN, it really just feels like they're an extension of self, right? They've kind of picked us based on what we were doing. Uh, but now it's like, okay, now you've got the power of the UN behind you. You've got the power of the youth envoy you've got the power of the secretary general how can we amplify your music ay and how can we amplify this startup battery tour and so that's kind of how it is kind of operating right now and it is early on and we've got two years of this and so i'm really looking forward to like honestly being continually being a voice for the youth but just having a bigger larger louder voice and making a bigger impact so do you have any like specific goals you plan to achieve within the next two years with this? Oh, heck yeah. I mean, I got all kinds of goals. I mean, I've had goals that I've been waiting to have. I mean, I've been waiting to talk to Elon Musk. I've been waiting to have a conversation with Energizer or Duracell and doing something like battery tour powered by them and the fan or something like that or whatever. Let's do some real actionable stuff. Somebody told me that Billie Eilish said I wanted to do like a concert sustainably or something. We should be talking right now. Billie Eilish powered by battery tour. You know, so do do I have a lot of things I want to do within the next year? Yeah, within the next six months, I want to be talking to all these people and I want to be furthering the impact that we've been doing Mm -hmm. and continually getting the world plugged in. And and hopefully what happens is by the end of year two, you know, everybody in the world, I mean, whether you walk into your home and you look at the outlet on, on the wall, you think of the battery tour. You think about an action that you can do, whether it's like our partners at Four Ocean, it's just picking up you know, a water bottle, or you, you, know, you, you feel empowered and know that turning the light off for a second can be energy efficient. Maybe all of these things are cumulative. We can start moving toward uh, uh, centered around uh, just thought of I'm an outlet for change and I can make a difference. And so if you had any advice to give young people looking to engage with the climate crisis or sustainability, what would you say? To young people, I would say, you know, just breathe and, and, and pause, right? You know, observe what's going on and, uh, and, you know, know yourself, right? Know who you are, know what you stand for. And I think the, the three biggest factors are really focus, passion, and collaboration. You know, I think that it's as simple to say is focus on who you are, what you stand for, what you believe in, what's affecting you, how you affect others figure out what that passion is because of that focus, right? Because when you do that deep dive, you'll figure out what you care about. You'll figure out what you're passionate about. And then once you know what you're passionate about, well, then it's time to collaborate. Then it's time to enjoy, you know, enjoy the social being that you really are and, uh, and make that difference that you want to see in the world. And AY, if you had to give advice to a young musician looking to use their platform to engage in climate or sustainability, what would you tell them? I'll take a broad look and just say, hey, man. And I always used to talk about this with my music. It's like, I make music that keeps your dreams alive, even when you're not sleeping. And I think the goal and this is to take a step toward, uh, you know, your dream or goal every day, a little step, whatever that is. Go and do and jump. You know, that's what I would say to an entrepreneur who's trying to start a business. Instead of just talking about it all day long, create traction, do something. Now, I, and so as a musician, I would say, you know, you could talk a lot about wanting to be sustainable and things like that, but, you know, go do, go do, get involved, get connected, you know, and take a step toward that goal every single day. And see, that's what I did, though. You know, people want to know, how did you do this? And how did you, how do you book shows? And how do you, I just jumped. Like Steve Harvey would say, jump, 
go. Now, don't be stupid. Sometimes you're in college. It's like, oh, I want to be an artist and a musician. Well, that might not be the best time to quit college and school and your job to be a musician when you have no path to revenue, right? There's so many different things involved. So don't be stupid, but also jump. That's what I say. Ay and Thor for this insightful interview, as well as to Poddington Bear for the song "Tender and Curious." You've been listening to Climate Vibes, a podcast by the Climate Music Project, an organization that works to communicate a sense of urgency about the climate crisis by combining climate science with the emotional power of music to drive meaningful action. My name is Kaya Sakamoto, and I want to end with one last message from AY. For anyone that's listening, take a picture of an outlet anywhere, your home, your gym, your workplace, and upload that to the internet, tag Battery Tour, and we will follow you, we will share it. That lets us know you're plugged in to sustainability, you're here to help save the planet, and uh, yeah, you're, you're an outlet for change. Mm-hmm.